focusing on presentation. What does presentation essentially entail? What does it even mean? Well, it means that you are presenting in a way that engages the audience. It means that you're not necessarily just looking at your piece of paper. Remember I mentioned that you have 15 minutes? In those 15 minutes, you're going to have access to the internet, which is not limited to Google. It also includes things like AI platforms, ChatGPT, Gemini, and what have you, right? This is something that the World Scholars Club has essentially stood their ground and said, let's keep up with the times. Doesn't necessarily change the outcome. Your presentation and your delivery and your body language and your enunciations and all of that will be taken into consideration. So try not to necessarily just look at your piece of paper. However, 15 minutes is quite a short time. So make use of those moments every second of those 15 minutes. Make sure that you're going to be writing on a piece of paper. Because yes, you do have access to the internet. You do have your devices allowed for those 15 minutes. But after that, it would, be, it would no longer be allowed. So what then is the next set of things that you need to know? Well, you got to speak for four minutes. Obviously, if you're going to speak for 30 seconds or a minute versus another speaker that speaks for up to four minutes, it's going to obviously affect the scores, right? That's going to play uh, or have bearing on your content and also your strategy. So number one, presentation. Essentially, you're going to look at the judge. You're going to make sure that your delivery, your projection is just the right amount. Right? You're going to use body language to emphasize certain points. You're going to have facial expressions and emotions when you're delivering, evoking emotions when you're delivering. Secondly, your strategy. Your strategy usually comp comprises of your organization. Your organization, as we may very well know, needs to have structure or structure in the sense that you have an introduction, a body that may contain three arguments or four or two or your rebuttals. Rebuttals are, are, are your responses to the other team because debate is not necessarily just the monologue where you deliver your speech and you're done. No, you're going to have to engage with the other sides as arguments. Thirdly, it's how you conclude. Depending on how eloquent it was, depending on how original or dramatic or how well you basically pointed out the importance of your arguments towards the end. So that's your strategy. Your content primarily includes your arguments. Usually a speaker has three arguments. It's the power of three. Most people remember the power of three and it's much easier to follow. In your argument, you're going to have a claim, a warrant, an impact. This is a simple formula to construct a basic argument. A claim is essentially what you're trying to prove. That is the headliner. That is the label of what the entirety of one argument. But the next part is far more important, which is about your warrant. Now warrant, not the one that your police would need to have before barging your home. No, a warrant is your evidence. Why is your claim true? How is it true? Where did you get your evidence? Some examples to corroborate or to sort of ensure that it's not nearly just your word per se. It's not an opinion. That's what differentiates a claim and a warrant. When you combine those two, it's more substantial, right? But think about it. If you just make a claim, we're going to look at examples later on. It's without a warrant. That is known as an assertion. An assertion holds little bearing or doesn't necessarily convince the audience, right?